to fully understand this video, I recommend you watch my original commutator video, which I'll have on the screen. And that, I showed the basic concepts of, of commutators and gave you an outline. But that's all that was, an outline, and showing you how to follow it. Now, I'm going to show you how to expand upon that, so you can solve a wide variety of cases instead of just the one example I showed. Okay, so I'm going to use this example here where two edges need to be flipped. So the main point I'm trying to get across here is unlike what I showed, I touched on this in my other video, but I didn't really go in depth. X and Y, as I show on the outline here, don't have to represent one tone. In my other video, I showed that um, they represent one tone with the down, down, up, up move I showed you, but they can actually represent multiple tones, and that's what I'm going to show you here. So um, here um, is a different situation that I showed there, and it's probably a more common one. It's where two edges need to be flipped. Okay, so... Um, basically, I'm going to think this out before I do it. Um, I know I need to flip these two edges. How I'm going to do that is I'm going to make, make my X flipping this edge in its place. Okay? So that's my X. And then my Y is going to be moving this edge in to this edge's place and then undoing the moves, we, uh, the, the moves I did. And I already know that's going to work because of this simple concept. If you do something and then undo it, you'll be back to your original place. That's just simple. So, for example, if I did one tone, I undo that tone, I'll be back. So, we can apply this in a, on a larger scale. So for example, I could do multiple tones, undo them, and I'll be back to solved. And that's the reason commutators work. So, I'm going to be showing you that in this example. Okay, so, I need, like I said before, I need to flip this edge in its place. That's actually not too hard. What I can do is I bring this edge down, move it away, and then bring the middle up, move the bottom back. So that took the edge out and put it here. Now I want to place the edge back in, flipped correctly, which I can do by moving the middle down, bring, moving the bottom twice, or 180 degrees, then bringing the bottom up, or the middle layer up. Okay. That was X. And now for Y, I'm going to put this edge in its place and undo the moves I did on X. Um, and this will work because, like I showed before, if we do something, then undo it, it will um, leave the cube untouched, except for the things we changed. And in this case, the only thing we're changing is flipping this edge. And, well, flipping this edge and then we're replacing it with this edge, which is also flipping it. So let me show you that. We bring the edge down move the bottom away, or twice, sorry, and then move the middle back up. And as you can see, what we're doing here is we're undoing the exact moves I did for X. So let's continue. We move the bottom over here, bring the middle down, move the bottom back, bring the middle up, and then undo the U move. And that fixed those two edges. Yeah, like I said before, the reason that worked is we did X, which flipped one edge, and the only thing we're changing, like I said before, if we do something, then undo it, it will bring it back to the exact same position it was in. Um, and the exact same position the edge was in was flipped. So since I put another edge in its place that was flipped, it unflipped that edge. I hope this makes sense to you. I'm going to be showing you some more examples. Okay. So in this next example, we're going to be swapping edges across from each other. We aren't twisting anything, we're just swapping them. In fact, we want them to stay in the same orientation because we all already have all four of the incorrect ones oriented. They just need to be put in the right place or permuted. And let's look at what we have to do here. This white one needs to come over here, and this yellow one needs to move back. So these two need to switch, and this red one needs to come here. This orange one needs to come back, so these two need to switch. So we need to switch these two, and switch these two. That's easy. Um, we just need to follow the same pattern I just showed you. Which, um, what we're going to do is we're going to swap these two edges, put these two in their place, and then, and then undo the moves we did to swap these. Let's do it. So to swap these edges, it's really easy. that um, We just bring them into the bottom layer like this. Now they're both right here. I switch them, and then bring the middle layer back up. So that's going to be X. 
and as you can see that swapped the two edges. Now y is going to be replacing, um, put, putting these two in the spot that the original two were in, which is like this. And now undo x. So that would be bring the middle back down, move the bottom twice around, bring the middle up, and now we need to undo the u move, and we're back to salt. Um, there is another algorithm you can do for that that's uh, a bit faster, but I'm just using this one for example purposes. And um, the reason I'm using a lot of M moves or middle layer moves on these examples where I'm only mo I only want to move around edges or twist edges is let's look at what happens when you do an M move. Or, or let's look at a face turn. As you can see, four corners have moved and four edges have moved. This is kind of off topic, but um, four corners have moved and four edges have moved. Okay, um, but what if we do a middle layer turn? Let's look what's moved. Four edges have moved, but no corners. Obviously, the four centers have moved, have moved in their relationship with others, but they actually haven't been moved, um, if you understand that. But basically, we did move the four edges. So, it, it, that's the reason why it's easier to, you know, only move edges with middle slice turns because it's, uh, it's only moving edges and we aren't getting corners involved, which make everything a lot more complicated. So, um, I think I'm going to show you a, a, another example with centers. So, there's a popular pattern that I'm going to show here, and you probably already know it's called the flower pattern. And it's a really cool pattern to look at, but the thing is, it's actually, you're using a commutator to get it there. You might not know it, but you are. So, um, what this is, is what, um, uh, you know, it's probably best to show you it from a solved cube. We were moving only centers, and we want to do that by using slice turns because they only involve centers and edges. And, okay, we're going to do that by, so we're going to bring the middle up, okay, so that moves the centers. And that's going to be X, okay? And then we're going to move, do an E move and move this middle over here. That's Y. Undo X. Undo Y. And the pattern. So it's as simple as that. And that's the last example I'm going to show. So again, in this video, um, this is, I'm, I showed you three examples here. But the main purpose of this is to um, let you know how you can expand upon the knowledge I showed in my last video. And if you're wondering how I'm, um, I, I have memorized this move to flip edges, but if you're creating your own new commutator, the best way to do it is either write it down, so write the X down, and then you just write it backwards. So write each, each clockwise turn counterclockwise, and then you have the um, algorithm backwards. And that will be the inverse, so that would be Y. And that's how, that's a little bit more on advanced commutators. So I hope you enjoyed the video. And it would be really nice if you subscribed and looked at some of my other videos. Uh, I make videos on similar things like this. And um, bye.